Hi, my name is David Brown. I'm an applications engineer with Hawk Ridge Systems, and today we're going to talk about springs. I'm working on this project here, and I have a bracket a subassembly. And this bracket can be clamped onto one of three different size tubes. So I have three configurations of this bracket, and I want to put some springs on here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that and open that up. Here's my bracket. I'm going to turn real view graphics off so that we can see it better. And as you can see, I have three different configurations of this bracket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, an in-part or an in-place uh, component in, within the context of this, this assembly. In order, of this, in order for this to work properly, I need to insert a reference dimension in the placement or in the area that I'm going to place this spring. So just put that in there like that and hit OK. And that's going to control the height of my spring. I'm going to use this dimension in an equation. So now I come over to my assembly tab, insert components, new part, select my template, and I'm going to choose this face for my in place mate and begin sketching the profile for my or the diameter of my spring. Features curves, helix, and spiral. And I'm going to choose height and pitch. And those are the two uh, parameters that I'm going to control for, uh, for adjusting this spring. Once I have this in place, I'm going to go ahead and, while I'm still editing this, grab this dimension, move it out here, and I'm going to double click on it, hit the equal sign, and pick up this dimension that I placed in there and hit OK. Now this spring, will, the length, the height of this spring is adjusted by this dimension. So what I want to do is I'm going to come back to my feature manager tree for my assembly. And what I have right now is I just have a single part in here or a spring that has only one configuration. I need to create three configurations of that spring. So I'm going to go ahead and return to my assembly here, right click on that new part, rename it, and call it spring. Right click on it again, I'm going to save this in an external file. And now at this point I'm going to open this up. So I open up this part and now what I can do is I can make some changes to this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the configurations of this. And I'm going to name them based on the, the tube diameters that I'm using so that they correspond with the same names that I gave my configuration of my assembly. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to make a modification to this dimension here. I'm going to double click on that. This is the pitch dimension. Make sure I double click on it fast enough so that I get this up. And I'm going to w make sure that all of these configurations are selected. I'm going to select this dimension. I need to hit my equal sign in here. Select that dimension and divide it by 10. And that's the factor that I'm using to change the pitch of my spring. I hit OK. Now I update this part. Now at this point, <clears throat> what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and create the spring feature itself. Put a circle in here. This will represent the diameter of my the spring wire. And I need to make sure that I have a relation between the center point and the helix and make that a Pierce relation. Hit OK. And now I'm going to create my swept boss. Select the profile and the helix for my path and hit OK. At this point I'm going to right click on my sweep feature 
configure this feature and make sure that it's unsuppressed for all of the other configurations. Hit apply and OK. And I'll rebuild this and I'll save it and I'll close this out and return to my assembly. Now what I need to do is I need to make sure that each of the configurations of my spring correspond with the uh, configurations of my bracket. So I'll make each one active and then change that configuration to make sure that I have all, uh, that only this configuration selected. I hit OK. As you can see that that updates that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this visibility of that helix off so you can see that better. Select my final one. Make sure that this is selected. Hit OK. And I'm going to make sure that that's also turned off. And now you can see the configurations of the spring compress and change the length just like I was hoping for. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my right plane and choose mirror components. And I'm going to mirror that guy to the other side and now I have a bracket that has the configurations of the springs and they appear to compress as I change the configuration of the bracket. So in today's video, we, we created a custom spring inside the context of an assembly. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope it was beneficial to you. And um, if you did, please subscribe to Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.